Thanks for joining us, and let's get started. This episode will talk about acceptance and the ego. Today we'll address what is the ego? Is it good or bad? How should it be helpful? How is it harmful? Does acceptance mean giving up your dreams? How does acceptance play a role in growth and when to persist and when to accept? As usual, we'll introduce you to your personal challenge, which is designed to get you in the habit of practicing things that are healthy for the new you. Ready? Awesome, let's get started. With that, we invite you to get settled in a place where you can digest this information without interruption or struggle, clear your mind, and get ready to take the next step in a vital transformation. Let's start with a brief moment of silence to focus and meditate on what you're about to learn, receive, and practice. Hello everybody and welcome again to our session about self-acceptance and the ego. This session is number four. We just finished talking about relationship, about your career. Now we're going to take it more internally, which is very, very important to be aware and be spiritual about your self-acceptance and the ego. Let's first explain the concept of ego and the concept of self-acceptance. What is it? When people talk about it, that self-acceptance is quite important. We all need to accept ourselves the way we are. But you know, once you have self-acceptance, there is a little tricky situation going on there. If I accept myself just the way I am, and there is an individual who tell me what's wrong with me, I, I might get angry, I might get upset, I might look at them in the wrong way. That's when the ego kick in. Okay, so the ego and the self-acceptance sometimes not working very well together. Before I talk about the ego, I would like to remind you that self-acceptance is a very important thing. It's the it's the, the one of the necessity of the well-being. So if we're talking about basically building the pillar of the well-being, one of the major pillar of the well-being is self-acceptance. You gotta accept yourself. If you don't accept yourself, why would you be upset if people are not accepting you? It's very, very simple. You gotta accept yourself. Now, don't worry about the ego for now. I mean, if you feel you're not accepting yourself or who you are or what you do or, or what you're meant to be doing, first, accept yourself now as you are. This is the first step to begin. Let's talk now about the ego. Now, the ego is a very tricky thing. The ego, there is a positive ego and there is a negative ego. What is a negative ego? When you're so busy with yourself, now, busy with yourself also split to A and B. A, I'm thinking I'm number one. I'm thinking I'm better than everybody else. So I'm not listening to anybody. I'm by myself. I know what I'm doing. Everybody else is stupid. I'm better than you. I'm richer. I'm smarter. I'm way more beautiful than you. That's one type of ego. Second type of ego, we call it more the negative side of the ego. The negative side of the ego is when you think you are the worst. I'm terrible. I'm ugly. I am poor, I'm never gonna make it. Who are you busy with when you say it? Tell me who you're busy with. You, very simple. You, you, and more you. So whenever you tell yourself you are the best or you are the worst, both of them are basically ego. It's just a different time. Can you turn that into something positive? Can you take this thing that called ego and actually say ego can be positive? Absolutely, let me show you. So for example, if you want to motivate yourself, you gotta say some good words to yourself. You gotta accept yourself, which is more the positive ego. Accept yourself as you are and tell yourself, you know what, I'm gonna make it. When a person do a three-point shot in a basketball, if that person say, I'm not sure I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna try, you know the shot gonna look like? Almost there, almost. You know, would you ever say she's almost pregnant? There's no such a thing, either you make it or not. So the ego is a self-motivation power that you need to go ahead and make it. But the ego, positive, can also work on the minus. 
way. Listen to this one. It's very important. So let's say people start telling you how great you are. Can you imagine if you're standing next to a picture of Picasso? You know Picasso, I hope, right? And people think that you drew that picture. And they look at you and say, oh my God, you are a genius. You drew such an amazing piece. This is the most beautiful thing. And by mistake, somebody wrote your name on the picture. What are you going to do now? Are you let the ego get in because you're about to lose the crown? Are you going to let them go? Or are you going to use this opportunity to humble yourself because you're strong enough? You can deal with it. You can actually say, not me. This is a picture of Picasso. Now, you might be afraid that you're losing all the crowd, all the audience, but because you are so strong and so powerful and you build yourself so well because of the self-acceptance, you don't need the ego coming from outside because you already build yourself inside. So ego can either serve you or go against you. If you use the ego well, it can self-motivate you to go to places that you would never dream about. And for that reason, ego can actually give you the power back. Ego can give you actually the happiness back. Ego can motivate you to grow your spirituality to awareness to a much higher level. To the, the, the reason that the self-acceptance mission is so important because within us there is forces. And those forces that we hear those voices, Everybody has a voices. And I'm not talking about that you are, have some mental disease. I'm talking about the inner voice that talks to you. There is a negative inner voice and a positive inner voice. The positive inner voice will tell you that you're absolutely going to make it. So if we talk about the three-point shot or the, I don't know, throwing a ball in a football field, Hail Mary, let's say, and you hope it's going to work or you know it's going to work. What's the difference between I hope I'm going to make the shot Oh, I know I'm going to make the shot. Do you feel there is a difference there? I hope you're full of doubt, but you're trusting that sometimes something above will help it. I know is when you're going to go for the shot. So when I'm talking about self-acceptance, when I'm talking about the ego, you need the ego sometimes to push you forward to do a certain thing that you cannot believe you can make it. So if your self-acceptance is low, it's not going to help you to achieve the goals that you always wanted to achieve, which is inner power, inner happiness. For that, that reason, you gotta start to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you are capable. And if you don't see the good in yourself, it might disturb, let me be honest with you, it will definitely disturb with your growth, with whatever you wanna achieve in life. So please start to think about it, accept yourself. Now, what do we do with the ego? The ego has many levels. See, if you feel that you are sure of yourself, if you're sure of yourself, that's, that's a beautiful thing. What are you going to do with the ego later? We've got to take care of it. If you take a great player like Michael Jordan, everybody want to be like Mike. If you look at his life story, those of you who read his book, he started terrible. You know, he was not even accepted to his, to his team. I mean, it was a terrible start. And he could lower his level of ego and crush himself that he's not good enough. What he did is basically practice nonstop. He was the first one getting on the court and make sure that he practices three point, two point, everything. Why? Because he want to raise his self-acceptance together with the practice itself. That's what it's all about. And then you start to believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, you become happy. When you believe in yourself, you become powerful. When you believe in yourself, things start to happen in your life. But if you have doubts about what you can do in life, then the ego might go in the other direction. It will be the negative ego. You're not good enough. You're never going to make it. And I'm telling you, that black hole, once you're getting in there, it's going lower and lower every day. But when you have the inner ego that motivates you, you can make it, you can make it, that's going to be a beautiful thing. The biggest question right now for us is, Balance, to achieve balance in the area of negative ego versus positive ego, self-acceptance or just be busy with myself. Because sometimes when you are so busy with self-acceptance, you're not busy with others. You're just you, you, you and yourself. It's also spiritual. And we are here to make sure we become spiritual, we become happy and we become powerful. We want to mix all those things that my life will be perfect. So when do you push it away, the ego? And when you 
practice self-acceptance. Well, it's all, it's, it's a human soul, a human being, a human awareness. It's almost like a stock. You ever look at the stock market is going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's like life, like a roller coaster. It depends where you are in life. Sometimes when you're low, you need the ego to go up. Sometimes when the ego go up, put it down. So you have to have almost like self-awareness to see where you are. You know, I will give you five extension of the ego that was written 500 years ago. And those Kabbalists, those sages, those wise people put it together for us on a piece of paper. And the five extensions go like that. Anger, dangerous one, control, judgment, pride, and hatred. Now, when we talk about those five extensions of the ego, it's dangerous. I mean, let me take just one, anger. Anger comes from the ego because you think you're better than the other person. That's why you get angry with them. Pride, I think I'm better than you. Judgment, you know, you're judging the other person. Control, I gotta control you. I'm allowed to hate you. All those extensions of ego, you gotta stay away from. If you touch those five areas of ego, this is the time you pull back. You can't use that self-acceptance in that area. That's how you know when to be or not to be. To have ego, to have ego, when you're a little bit down, take the ego and use it as a tool to raise your level up. But when you go into those five extensions of ego, it's time to cool off and chill out. You know, if you ever look at the angry person's face or what they say, what they say first makes sense. What they say second, I have no idea what they're talking about. Why? Because when they get angry, they get angry for the right reason. But after they get angry, this is already the ego start to control them. They have no control. They're out of control. Control freak people, whoever has issue of control. They have to control everything, everything around them. When you want to control everything around you, it's your ego took over. It's not you anymore. So can you let go of control? That's what makes you powerful. And then it will be so easy for you to self-accept yourself. Think about it. Acceptance comes from the idea that you overcome certain area of the ego. So just please think about those things as you grow to the next level of spirituality. Because the ego plays a big role in your spirituality. We need the ego there to motivate us, but we also have to be careful of the ego not to bury us. I would like to share with you a story about ego. So I remember that uh, um, uh, somebody asked me to meet with them. They, they known to be in uh, Queens, New York, as somebody very, like a guru, like a spiritual person. And I was very excited when they called me. I was single then, you know, I was looking for more and search for more answer. And they want to meet with me. And I remember they invited me to some, in those days, vegan restaurant was rare. They invited me to some vegan restaurant. I'm talking about 23 years ago, 24 years ago. And they took me there and served me some food. I was like, wow, I guess I'm doing really well. Then they say, if I don't mind to come upstairs with them, the restaurant, there's a second floor. And as I'm sitting there, <laughs> the person starts to scream at me, yelling at me, like losing it. <laughs> and because I was enjoy the food so much. Those of you know me, I like to eat and good food. And I look at her face and I start <laughs> laughing for no reason. I start laughing, not from fear. You know, it was just, what is, what is this guy doing? I'm actually respecting him. Somehow, somebody told this individual that when I went to hear one of his lectures, I didn't find it deep enough, which is true. I did say it. I didn't find that lecture deep enough. He gets so mad with me that he starts screaming at me. And then he tells me, are you now laughing at me? You don't even take me seriously? I said, man, you have no idea how much I respect you. He says, so why are you laughing? I say, I didn't expect somebody like you to get that angry. I understand people get angry, but that went too far. And then he give me a hug and he start crying. And I'm sitting with him, I said, wow. I mean, somebody like a guru, like him, crying on my shoulder, said, what's going on? Then he opened up and he told me about his life and what he's going through, his wife issue. And I said to him, you know, let's talk about it. Let's open up. You know, I can share with you what I know. You share with me whatever you know. 
And I think, you know, that the anger that you show comes from fear, if you're asking me. And there is a fear because you don't believe people believe in you. So you hold, put the glove on and you try to punch whoever threatening you because your self-acceptance is so low and you try to show people how powerful you are with your anger. So this is an example, a story, how sometimes you gotta cool down. You gotta shut down that reactive need that you have and come up with more creative idea what to do with your ego because your ego can bury you. Be careful. If you need to show ego to the people, that means your self-acceptance is really low. You don't believe in yourself. That's why you're showing off everybody who you are. I would like to challenge you in this session when we talk about the ego. I want you to do things as a service to either a community center, hospital, your own house. But those things is things that you don't like to do. You absolutely hate doing. Some of you don't like to wash dishes. Some of you don't like to clean the toilet. Some of you don't like to volunteer in a community place that you're supposed to do things for others. But do those things, please listen carefully, without even nobody know that it was you. I'm not talking about doing something for someone else. I'm talking about doing a service, which means you clean your floor, but nobody needs to find out you clean the floor. That's really what it's all about. And you will feel how your ego and you are doing it together. And slowly, slowly, your ego and you become such a good friend that the self-acceptance going to such a high level that nobody will ever bother you. Thank you. This has been another episode of Vital Transformation's Guided Sessions. For more information, visit us at vitaltransformation.org where you'll find access to all of our guided sessions, content library, weekly updates, and upcoming events. To keep content like this new, relevant, and free to the public, Make a donation today at vitaltransformation.org slash donate or write to us at donate at vitaltransformation.org. Thanks for joining us and we'll speak to you soon.